that if you have a baby face for a lifetime and the size of a child, will you consider this as a blessing or a curse? In today's movie recap, a man matures mentally but still looks like a child. Because of this, he enjoys the privileges that only children have, using it to get close to and take advantage of the women he desires. Witness how long he can hide this secret. In the year 1899, Anna peacefully roasts potatoes in the middle of a field. As she sits serenely, a man named Joseph arrives, pursued by soldiers, prompting him to seek help from Anna. Anna lifts her skirt, allowing Joseph to enter and hide. After a while, the soldiers arrive and question Anna about someone named Colin. Despite initially lying, she claims to have seen him running in the direction she pointed. Initially skeptical, the soldiers eventually leave when it starts raining. Once they depart, Anna stands up and Joseph introduces himself. From that encounter, they develop a relationship and eventually become a married couple. A few years later, their union bore fruit, but Joseph remained sought after by the police. The couple hid with a raftsman, and while they were eating, the police arrived and pursued Joseph. They showered him with bullets as he ran, forcing him to leap into a river. After that, he was never seen again. Some say he drowned, while others claim he went to Chicago, USA, under the name of Joe Kyle Sheik and became a millionaire. Meanwhile, Anna made a living selling wares in the market until she grew old. With the onset of World War I, instead of geese, she started selling turnips. Agnes, aging as well, worried about her cousin Jan, who was called for war despite his desire to stay with Agnes. During their assessment center, they individually assessed the capabilities, including Jan. However, Jen failed the assessment for the army, so he left and went to Agnes. She embraced and kissed her. While Agnes worked as a nurse, she met a cook named Alfred. Time passed, the war ended, and the free state declared Danzig independent. The Poles were given their own post office, where stamp collector Jan Bronski worked, and Alfred Matsarath also stayed in Danzig. Alfred and Jan were distinctly different, but they both felt the same way about Agnes. While it was raining, Agnes was in the hospital, and Anna, her mother, was with her. The nurse assessed Agnes' stomach, and after a few hours, Agnes gave birth. Anna called Alfred, telling him they had a baby boy named Oscar. Alfred quickly entered with Jan, and they saw the child they named Oscar. Agnes mentioned that when he turns three, he should have a tin drum. Years later, at Agnes' home, she played the piano and sang with January. Their guests enjoyed lively meals, laughter, storytelling, and drinks. Jan, during their singing, caressed Agnes's chest and kissed her. One visitor measured Oscar's height against their door, predicting he would grow taller. On the other side, Agnes, her mother, Jan, and their guests played cards. Meanwhile, Oscar went under their table, saw Jen entering, and placed his foot on Agnes's skirt. Oscar went to his room, contemplating his future, deciding to remain a child forever and not grow up. Oscar went down a passage, thinking of tipping over a container of bottles and jumped into it. Agnes heard it and immediately called for help. They lifted him up and Agnes blamed Alfred, stating he left the cellar door open. The doctor mentioned that with two weeks of rest, Oscar would regain his previous strength and Oscar thought his plan had succeeded. Back home, Jen showed Oscar Poland's very first stamp, a hundred years old, when Alfred suddenly called them to eat. Alfred took the drum from Oscar, saying it was broken and might harm him. Oscar refused to give it and in exchange for the drum, his mother offered him chocolate, but he still declined. Jen suggested buying him a new one, but Oscar resisted. Alfred attempted to take the drum forcefully, leading to Oscar screaming loudly, shattering a clock's glass, revealing Oscar's high-pitched voice, deterring anyone from attempting to take it. The next day, Oscar successfully used his voice to break a glass, and his friends celebrated while walking, with Oscar playing the drum. Alfred saw Oscar writing with chalk on a board and forbid him from learning to read and write great classics, taking the chalk away from him. Oscar celebrated his first day of school and he had a photo taken with his friends. At school, his teacher noticed him and recognized him as the talented drummer. The teacher suggested keeping the drum aside until after the lessons, but Oscar disagreed and hid it under his desk. During a class schedule reading, Oscar continued to play the drum, annoying his teacher. Despite attempts to take it away, Oscar screamed, breaking the school window and his teacher's eyeglasses. Agnes visited Oscar's doctor, explaining the situation. The doctor asked when Oscar fell, and Agnes mentioned it had been almost three years. The doctor decided to examine the child's spine, but struggled to take the drum from Oscar. Oscar screamed, breaking containers with preserved animals and fetuses. The doctor, amazed, stated he would write a paper about such a condition for one of their journals. Agnes read the doctor's notes about Oscar's current situation in front of him and their relatives. Anna asked Agnes if she ever inquired why Oscar wasn't growing, but Agnes mentioned it should have been Alfred asking the doctor, and they ended up blaming each other. While Oscar ate, Gretchen attempted to teach him to read, but he wasn't paying attention. 
Oscar grabbed another book, the one he preferred, and even though Gretchen initially resisted, she eventually read it to him. Agnes arrived, looked at the book, thinking Oscar wouldn't understand it due to his young age. Agnes and Gretchen were unaware that while Gretchen was reading the book, Oscar was visualizing explicit images in his mind. The next day, the children played a cooking game with live frogs. One child urinated on a frog and they thought of letting Oscar taste it. They chased him, caught him, and held him while one child spoon-fed him frog broth before leaving. After that day, Oscar decided it was an opportunity to escape the persecution by the soup cooks. They visited Jan and Mekobiela there. They wandered around and later bid farewell to January. Before leaving, Jan gave Oscar money for his drum. So, Oscar and Agnes promptly went to Mr. Marcus for a new drum. Marcus showed silk stockings and offered them to Agnes, who initially refused but eventually accepted due to their affordability. Marcus let Oscar choose a new drum, and Agnes entrusted Oscar to Mr. Marcus for an hour as she had something important to attend to. Mr. Marcus agreed. Agnes went to Jan, unaware that Oscar had followed her. When Agnes arrived at Jan's place, they were already undressing and making love. Oscar watched from outside the building, noticing a building with a large clock in front. He climbed it and looked out. Mr. Marcus was searching for him, but only Oscar was just shouting and playing the drum, causing the windows to shatter. Oscar and his family watched a circus show with small clowns providing entertainment and showcasing their talents. Agnes and Alfred exchanged glances while watching Oscar. As Oscar walked around the circus, one of the performers, Bebra, noticed him. Bebra introduced himself, mentioning that he stopped growing when he was 10 years old. Bebra asked Oscar if he was around 14 or 15, but Oscar corrected him, stating he was 12 and a half. Bebra then asked Oscar to guess his age, and Oscar amusingly guessed 55. Bebra revealed he was 53 and could soon be a grandfather. Bebra inquired if Oscar was an artist, but Oscar demonstrated his drumming and screaming, shattering light bulbs. Impressed, Bebra applauded and shook Oscar's hand, suggesting Oscar could join them. However, Oscar preferred being in the audience and keeping his talent a secret. Bebra disagreed, stating that people like them shouldn't just sit as an audience but should perform. Agnes and Alfred, looking for Oscar, heard this and Bebra bid Oscar farewell, expressing the possibility of meeting again. Oscar and his family then went home. At home, Alfred surprised Agnes with a radio, bringing joy to her. Outside, Jan waited, greeted by Oscar, who handed him the drum. Jan and Oscar entered, welcomed by Agnes and Alfred dressing up for a demonstration. Alfred advised Jan to read the Danzig Sentinel as Jan was on the Polish side. Jan corrected him, stating he was a Pole. Agnes asked Alfred to bring an umbrella, but he declined and left. Oscar noticed Jan's blue eyes and mentioned his own. Jan explained that the Bronski family had blue eyes, sharing this trait. Agnes approached Jan, asking him to stop, but Jan replied that he couldn't bear it anymore, unknown to Oscar. As the movie progresses, the Nazis begin expanding into Poland. The Nazi leader salutes officer Albert Forster, and everyone, including the Polish, greets the Nazi officer. Below the platform, Oscar plays his drums, mimicking the band. While people dance, a sudden heavy rain prompts everyone to disperse. The next day, Oscar's family goes to the seashore, where Oscar observes Jen flirting with Agnes. While walking, they see fishermen retrieving a cow head with eels from the sea inside it. Witnessing this, Agnes can't help but vomit, with Jan supporting her. Upon returning home, Alfred quickly prepares the eels for their meal. He attempts to feed Agnes, but she refuses, causing him frustration. In his annoyance, Alfred knocks her to the floor, prompting her to retreat to her room. Jan follows her, and as she cries, he intrudes by putting his hand under Agnes's skirt. Oscar witnesses this while hiding in the closet. Later, Agnes emerges and hastily consumes Alfred's cooked eels without any reaction. The next day, Agnes went to a toy store where she was being convinced by its owner, Marcus, to join him on a trip to London with Oscar. Marcus sweetened the deal, promising Agnes that if she came with him, Oscar would live like a prince. However, Agnes turned down the offer and she left. In the church, Agnes confessed while Oscar went to the statues to hang his drum. While confessing, Oscar repeatedly struck his drum, causing the priest to intervene. Oscar kicked him and the child cried loudly. At work, Agnes opened a can of sardines and ate them, displaying continued mental instability. Her husband and mother also see her eating raw fish inside their shop. Witnessing her deteriorating condition, the two grew concerned. Due to her child's condition, strained marriage, and an improper relationship with her cousin, Agnes succumbed to her mental state. Defiant, she headed to the restroom. Inside, Oscar and Alfred continued knocking on the door. Unfortunately, due to excessive consumption of raw fish, Agnes passed away. After Agnes's family left, Marcus went to her grave and prayed for her soul. A few days later, the Nazis began attacking Jews, burning their establishments and subjecting them to torment. 
To avoid a slow and painful death, Marcus took his own life. When Oscar visited him, he found Marcus lifeless. As time passed, Oscar's drums remained damaged, so he attempted to visit Kobiela to have them repaired. While entering, he was spotted by Jan, who worked at the post office. However, the post office had been declared a restricted area. Oscar sprinted inside, leaving Jan with no choice but to follow. Upon entering, Jan was handed a gun and helmet as they prepared to fight back against the Nazis. Moments later, the Nazis attacked the post office and the refugees retaliated. In the midst of the firefight, Jan sat in a corner to avoid the gunfire while Oscar continued searching for him. Spotting a drum atop a cabinet, Oscar disregarded the gunfire to retrieve it. When Kobiela saw Oscar attempting to reach the drums, he quickly approached and hit him. Kobiela tried to grab the drums while Oscar resisted, but he was shot by the Nazis upon reaching for it. The drums rolled towards Oscar, and he grabbed them. Jan took Oscar and injured Kobiela to a room to play cards. They were about to be executed while Oscar was taken to safety by one of the Nazis. After a few days, people gathered to welcome a Nazi officer. The next day, a woman named Maria arrived at their shop to become their housemaid. When they are about to sleep, Oscar wakes up Maria and licks her belly button. Still not contented, Oscar makes love with Maria as she turns off the light. One day, Oscar returns home and hears Maria moaning. In his surprise, he catches up Maria and Alfred beating each other's drums. Oscar's heart was consumed with anger and jealousy, prompting him to confront his father. Alfred, in turn, shifted the blame back to Oscar, and he left afterward. While Maria was washing dishes and crying, Oscar approached her to offer comfort. However, she lashed out in anger, kicking Oscar. Realizing her actions, she attempted to reconcile with Oscar, but the boy responded by punching her in the stomach. After nine months, Oscar turned 17 and Maria's pregnancy became visible. While Maria was sleeping on a couch, Oscar attempted to stab her unborn child with scissors. Fortunately, Maria was only half asleep and managed to stop Oscar's actions. Months later, Maria gave birth and their whole family celebrated the newborn with Alfred. While eating, Oscar observed the sweet interaction between Alfred and Maria, leading to jealousy in his heart. He approached Maria's child, lifted him, and claimed to be his parent. Oscar told the child that when he turns three years old, he would gift him with drums. The following day, Oscar encounters the dwarf leader of the circus again. The dwarf leader happily greets him and introduces Oscar to Roswitha, who shares the same condition as them. While inside a cafe, the dwarf leader informs Oscar that they are entertainers for the Nazis. Seizing the opportunity, he invites Oscar to join them in Paris. Oscar agrees and showcases one of his talents. As they stand beneath the Eiffel Tower, a connection develops between Oscar and Roswitha. While they were on stage to perform, Oscar once again showcased his talent of shattering glass through screams, delighting the audience who applauded him. Suddenly, an emergency alarm interrupted their show. Under one of the tables, Oscar kissed Roswitha and reassured her not to be afraid. Afterward, they playfully continued to perform in front of Nazi soldiers. While sipping her coffee, a bomb suddenly fell directly on her. Roswitha was hit by the explosion and died. Oscar screamed, but his companions restrained him from responding. Oscar was heartbroken by the death of his beloved, but after a few moments, he quickly recovered from it. Eventually, Oscar passed by their house and his comrades dropped him off, bidding farewell to each other. Upon arrival, Alfred and Maria were surprised while Kurt had already turned three. True to his promise, Oscar gave Kurt tin drums. Alfred was delighted by his arrival while Oscar remained full of jealousy. One day, two Nazi inspectors visited Alfred's house, prompting him to quickly hide Oscar. Alfred attempted to lie, but the inspectors already knew that Oscar had returned. They told Alfred that they should take Oscar to a clinic for racial purity. However, Alfred resisted, expressing his love for Oscar and refusing to put him in harm's way as those who went to the clinic never returned. After a few days, the Allies successfully took down the Axis powers. Now under Russian occupation, their family temporarily lived in the basement. While talking, a group of soldiers found them. They shot Alfred for being a traitor, leading him to die. They bury his body while Oscar teared up while looking at his father's grave. The tin drum, which he clung to since childhood, was also discarded in Alfred's burial. Oscar realizes many things and finally accepts that he is not a child anymore, he needs to grow up. While staring into the grave, Kurt suddenly threw something at Oscar's head, causing him to lose consciousness and his nose bled. After the commotion, his grandmother spoke to him. As Maria was leaving, Fange Gold asked her to marry him and stay, but Maria refused, saying they would live with her sister. When Oscar boarded the train, his grandmother just looked at him. Oscar, shouting and expressing his desire to bring Anna along, couldn't do anything and the movie ends.